so my my number two comes from a animated series, um, Avatar: The Last Airbender, mm-hmm. and uh, this is a quote from the character Uncle Iroh, who's who's like the who's supplying wisdom to his nephew Zuko, and Zuko's this young guy who wants to be you know the man and uh he's struggling with with uh some mental emotions and, and feelings so yeah i'll play the clip it's pretty self-explanatory um and we can talk about it after so without further ado it's a short clip here's my number two you will not be able to master lightning until you have dealt with a turmoil inside you what turmoil Zuko, you must let go of your feelings of shame if you want your anger to go away but i don't feel any shame at all i'm as proud as ever prince Zuko, pride is not the opposite of shame but its source true humility is the only antidote to shame wow i, I love that you know it's so cr- crazy as soon as he said that um I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm not ashamed at all. My pride is as high as ever. I I had that exact thought pop into my head, and I was like, "Are those two on the opposite ends of the spectrum?" And so I was I was laughing to myself when when he came back with that retort. Um, yeah, yeah. I love I, I love. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I just I love the line. Pride is not the opposite of shame, but its source. Yeah. True humility is the only anecdote to shame um i love that because i also think it 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 ties into a discussion we had previously which was like there there is like this expectation that in order to avoid shame you have to maintain this this image of like perfection and proud and um you know you have to be totally 100 percent confident and and always move forward that, that you're you have no flaws and that you're flawless and that you're the best person for uh the job in all instances um although i'm not really sure to be honest where the line between like pride and and confidence lies um but that's a that's a discussion for another time but i think um it is it is really an astute observation that from being overly proud comes shame yeah uh and only when you you embrace humility is when you can get rid of shame right when you can um be humble and and be okay with your shortcomings and accept that you know you are mortal right you're just mortal and you know um flawlessness and perfection are never really going to be attainable and uh when you when you accept that fact and accept that it's okay to uh make mistakes and and be flawed then you can get rid of that shame that comes when you don't perform or you don't uh obtain the goal or the end that you're you're trying for um and i think we forget that a lot that that if you want to get rid of those feelings of shame it's not to eliminate all of the wrongs and think that everything you do is is correct and right and and proud of that it's to accept that what you do may be flawed and wrong at sometimes and you may make mistakes but that's okay um, and so I, I, you know, I thought I, I really, when I heard that for the first time, it was thought it was really astute observation. I still think it's a really astute observation, and um, I try to keep that in my mind uh, a lot. But it's I, I would say I forget it sometimes, um, and it's hard. But I, I think it is really important. Yeah, that's a really great quote. Um, that's a really good quote. I, you know, I, I think, first of all, I love when you can pull really good quotes like that out of 
animated or, or young audience uh, pieces of work in general. I, I appreciate that thoroughly. But um, yeah, yeah, you, I think you, um, I don't have a lot more to say. I, I think that, um, you know, I, I, and it's, I think it's one of those situations where, you know, it kind of depends on how you define terms. And I struggle with that sometimes. Like if I'm, if I'm not even necessarily debating somebody, but just conversing with somebody about a powerful quote, a powerful line, whatever the case, like, yeah, we can define different terms in different ways, interpret different words in different ways. But at the end of the day, these words mean something. And um, I think that that quote is, I, I certainly agree with it. Obviously other people could, you know, have a different interpretation, but I think that's a pretty universally recognizable and agreeable quote. And it's one that I think is very powerful and astute. So yeah, I appreciate that. Mm. And, you know, also like, I think just to tie this into a little bit more like modern culture, right? We, we do have kind of this, uh, uh, particularly on, on social media and stuff, this like culture of like, you have to portray perfection at all times. Uh, and you have to portray, you know, like complete flawlessness and sunshine and roses all the time. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because while that happens, depression levels are at an all time high uh, among our, our generation. And I think there is a strong correlation between, you know, the the need and the expectation of, of portraying flawlessness and perfection at all points uh and you know depression and and shame uh and you know anxiety um because when you're forced and to or or you convince yourself that you need to do that it it really does um make every thing that doesn't go your way or every mistake seem like um the world is falling and so I, I think, you know, it is important to remember to, for people, especially in our generation, like mistakes and flaws and um, shortcomings are inherent and part of our, our human nature. And um, the cure to depression is not to eliminate those mistakes, but to be okay with them and embrace them. And recognize that that's part of you, and that's that's perfectly yeah. okay. 